So femto cells today, there's a very active and strong market for. We've got uh, 36 operators around the world with commercial femto cell offers. In the past, that was very much focused on residential deployments. But what we've got today is about a third of those deployments include enterprise and public spaces. Uh, and this is leading to a sort of broadening of what we really mean by femto cells into this whole kind of small cell spectrum. Um, and some people would talk about pico cells, some would talk about micro cells, some would talk about uh, metro cells. It actually doesn't matter, we support that whole range. They're all enabled by the femto technology. Um, what we also have is a lot of very active standards work around het nets and generally kind of multi-layer cell architectures. Um, and we've seen, for example, surveys suggesting that 60% of operators see small cells as more important to LTE than the traditional macro cells. Um, likewise, we've got you know, an exciting time because this coming year is going to be the year when we expect LTE small cells to go truly commercial. Uh, so plenty of developments there. Um, and it's really bringing what's now a proven technology of femto cells for 3G into you know, the new dimension of, of LTE so that operators can plan their LTE network with both small cells and larger macro cells alongside each other. So you know, most operators today are looking at an, an offload strategy so that they can make you know, the growth of mobile data something that they can truly sustain economically in the long term. Um, and offload's a great way of doing that, but the way of doing it isn't yet you know, clear for everybody in the industry. And probably the best way of doing it depends on the operator. Um, so we have femto cells as a very natural way of doing data offload. You know, the operator's got their existing investment in the back-end infrastructure, in their network, the existing trusted high security uh, features of 3G, um, and also the existing kind of seamless authentication. And a lot of those things aren't features of Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi is evolving a lot to add in, you know, seamless authentication and a better user experience and to make it manageable by the operator. But there are places where that's just, you know, difficult. Um, and I heard operators in the last couple of weeks saying, in public spaces, they only see about another couple of years opportunity for operator-managed Wi-Fi. And after that, you know, the levels of interference that they see in the bands become something that an operator doesn't want to put their name to. Now, different operators are in different places on that. But either way, what, what we're doing is actually helping operators get the best from both. So we have an integrated femto cell Wi-Fi network initiative that recognises that, well, actually, there's a place for both technologies. And when they're alongside each other, actually, you can do better. You can have not just offload, but smart, fine-grained offload, where you can decide which radio bearer the traffic flows over. You can use the straightforward authentication of the femto cell to supplement that of the Wi-Fi so you don't need to build in new clients on the phones and this kind of thing uh, and generally that an operator just has to have one offload strategy using the best of both worlds in terms of femto and Wi-Fi.